Okay, this is Dutch Bushcraft here in Colombia, field testing the Enzo Elver. It's the 12C27 Sandvik uh, Steel version, uh, full scandy. And as you can see, and I hope the camera will pick this up, you see a, rail, a little rolling on the edge just from this very tough hardwood I'm cutting. So nothing but, uh, that a little repair won't fix. Uh, probably just some stropping like I normally do with uh, a full scandy. I give it a little secondary bevel uh, convex. But this one I wanted to test as it came from factory. And you can see cutting hardwood repeatedly can give a little roll on the very thin scandy edge. Okay, that's bushcraft out. Okay, back at it again. Use this very cheap uh, file sharpening file it came as a set this is the fine one I used it on the uh, edge just give it a little secondary uh, scandy bevel saber grind maybe it's already sharp and no more rolls or burrs in the blade I will touch it up using a fine stone I have with me and then uh, give it a few straps on the leather belt okay keep you informed Okay, Dutch bushcraft back again after using the little stone I carry with me in the field it's part of my field sharpening kit you can see I gave uh, the edge a little polish already of course it's still a secondary saber grind at this time and I will confess it with my leather belt that's basically the reason why I still car carry a leather belt in my pants okay this was stage uh, two Restoring the edge. Dutch bushcraft here. Just dropping the knife using my leather belt. Have some toothpaste uh, on the inside of the leather belt. And just give it some gentle drops. It's just to polish and give it a secondary little convex bevel. This should be enough already. So Dutch bushcraft again, uh, just finished the final stage, that is the stropping. I use just toothpaste because that's what I have with me. Of course you can also use your leather belt and maybe put uh, your favorite compound on the inside before you leave, use that. I'll just use toothpaste and brush it off later. Clean the blade, so a little stropping uh, in the end gave it a, a mirror polish again, a little convex. And that makes it just a little stronger when cutting hardwood than uh, a true scandy uh, will. Because a true scandy is very, very tiny at the edge, very thin at the edge. So it's more like a, likely to roll and burr maybe. This was a roll just from cutting this hardwood. That's over now. Okay, I will show you uh, the three stages I use in the field. So from cutting this piece of very hard wood, the truly scandy edge of the Enzo Elver blade in 12C27 Sandvik steel uh, just rolled a bit at the edge. So I used uh, the very cheap diamond sharpening device. Uh, I used a little sharpening stone and I used my leather belt with toothpaste to first give it the secondary uh, edge, more like a, a taper edge and then convex it out with my leather belt. Now Jago just gave me a real Colombian water stone, it's famous here. It's a uh, native to Colombia and it's used for making sculptures and to sharpen knives. 
He's just now showing it with one of his own knives, his homemade knives. And that's a beefy knife, I tell you. Just like we use the sharpening stones over here. It's just a Colombian water stone that is exclusive to Colombia. That makes a difference here. Seems to me and it feels to me like a rather soft stone. And this is part of uh, Jago's sharpening kit. Excuse me. Yeah. He's also using the stropping. Okay. So he just gave me this, and now this is part of my kit. Well, this is the piece of wood, of course. This is now part of my sharpening kit. Thanks to Diego. Ninety degree spine. Really short work. As you can see, the spine, even though it's stainless steel, it's a 90 degree spine. And it works well with the ferrocerium rod, or as we call it, a fire steel. YouTube Dutch Bushcraft here. Going to show you a small test of the Enzo Elver. I really like this one. It's got the G10 handle scales and the Sandvik steel, 12C27 Sandvik steel, stainless steel. I really like this model. The handle is a bit slick with the G10, so I'm going to see how it performs when cleaning a fish. Once you're in the outdoors, you also always hope that you catch a fish. So this small knife, I think would perform well. And as you can see, it does. No problem here. I go behind the gill. And there it is. So, I'm going to clean this one. Oh, you see, that's, that was a female. And now the real test is not about if the knife can cut a fish, because basically any knife can. It's about 
grabbing the knife, pretending there's a lot of fish waiting for you. Get all that gooey from the fish over there. And yes, this does get slippery. Yeah. You also see there's no, no finger guard. Yeah. So I do recommend you be careful with your next fish. Yeah? Because it does get slippery. Another thing is how easy it is to clean. You're done with all your fishes. I'm using uh, hot water but no soap. And this cleans up very quick and very well. All clean. Something I normally don't do with my food prep and final task knife, camp knife, is batoning. I like to keep this sharp, as I mentioned. And I bring. Another knife doesn't have to be a bigger knife, especially for batoning, can be bigger of course, and I call that my, uh, my tough camp knife. Yeah. So normally I will use this one for batoning, there's a more convex edge in it, therefore the edge is a bit stronger, maybe a bit less sharp. But in case you lose your tough knife, then you only have your food prep knife and still you sometimes need to baton so I'm going to make an exception and show you how this knife batons first a straight cut that's the most hard on the knife okay now some half cuts One over there. Yeah, I will use them as stop cuts. Now I'll go down the middle like this. And I'll do some push cuts towards the stop cuts yeah. and then maybe use some chest lever to make it even a bit more pointy for 10 pegs I like to keep uh, the actual point outside the middle because the middle part usually has the soft wood. So this is a quick way to make 10 packs using some batoning. Finish this one up. And as you can see by the cutting and by the blade, nothing happened, no rolls, whatever, it all feels good and sharp. That's all there is to this, and only with your food prep knife, at least for me, only with the food prep knife, in case you have lost your rough knife. The rough camp knife versus the delicate one. Delicate meaning the tasks, not as much the knife. Because of no of course it's a full tank construction. Okay. Next task. Okay, the next task. And this one I only do because I want to test the knife. This is a knife test, but I'd like to test all my knives before I take them out in the field and depend my life on them. And if you look at this, this is normally wood, I would not baton with a knife like this. 
it's probably also the maximum I would ever baton yeah but usually I keep it a max of half the blade so in this case that would be like two fingers thick and this is wrist thick so basically it's too big for this knife but I'm testing I want to know if the knife can take it so when I'm out in the field and I've lost my other knife I need to baton to get some dry wood. I need to know if the knife I depend my life on can take the stress. So let's try it. As you can see, very old seasoned wood. Not the easiest part, not in there. And the knife did perfectly fine. I know this is giving stress to the blade. That's why I test it before I have to depend my life on it. But again, the Enzo Elva did great. And it's also probably the last time I baton with this knife. But I know in an emergency situation the knife will not fail it can do this hard batoning even yeah. okay not a good point for the Enzo and absolutely no damage to the blade whatsoever and even very old hard wood yeah. I like to tilt the knife back and forward when feather sticking like this and the next time this instead of having to twist the piece of wood every time to find the angles. So as you can see it's still good and sharp. No problems there. I don't do the paper tests but believe me. This is still sharp and in excellent condition. So after the last batoning of the heavy piece of wood, we checked again and with your nail you can feel something there. But it's almost invisible. And in fact uh, a few times stropping would get rid of it. It's really tiny. You will probably uh, hear it in the paper cut. So we'll do some more feather sticking. I like to use the, the weight of my body more. And as I said, I tilt the knife up and down. And by pointing it up and down, I actually change. So basically when I go in the middle, I cut in the middle. I create two edges. If I'm tilting the knife down, I cut this edge. If I'm tilting the blade up, I'm cutting this edge. So in this one motion without changing the position of the wood, only the position of the knife, only the up and down motion or the straight, I can make fine curls just by altering the position. Tip down, I shave on the, for me, left side, tip up, I shave the right side in the middle, is in the middle of course. So by altering this, you don't have to twist your work over and over again. Yeah, that's how I make the feather sticks. Of course, you do it as you please, but as you can see, that little hardly visible dent or burr, or I don't even see well enough what it was, but we noticed something 
could have been just a bit of dirt, but I can't even see it now. With the nail, I can feel something. So it's probably just a couple of straps. We will let you know uh, when I give the end review of this knife. The Enzo Elver in 12C27 Sandvik steel. Okay, the uh, conclusion about the Enzo Elver after all this testing. Once again, I uh, agreed uh, with Brisa that they sent me the knife. It arrived within 24 hours from Finland to Holland, that's real quick. www.brisa.fe The Enzo Elver Being the younger brother or sister, sibling of the Trapper I modified the Trapper I did not feel any need to modify the Elver The sheet, good looking sheet, I wet formed it, it has less rattle but the retention is still not optimal, it will fall out, has a dangler and a belt loop, but it looks really good. We want another leather sheet that has more retention, this western style sheet will fit the knife, has a good retention. But I like the, nof, the knife enough to actually uh, consider making uh, a Kydex for it or having a Kydex made for it. Okay, throughout all the testing I did, I took it to uh, Columbia first, I only sharpened this a couple of times using just the tools I have with me on a on a bushcraft trip or a survival trip or a camp trip whatever what I have with me in the field not the expensive stuff I have at home and of course it sharpens up really good that's the one of the benefits of the 12C27 I love Elmex steel don't get me wrong uh, Elmex steel is really hard so it will stay sharp for a long long time but it's also very difficult to sharpen and this 12c27 sandvik steel i see more as uh, a carbon steel that's easier to sharpen it's tough and of course it's stainless and i use this for food prep so i prefer it to be stainless food prep and small tasks although you see in the videos that i also batoned with it and did everything you could possibly do if this knife would be your only knife so do i recommend this knife i'm talking 85 euro on the website yeah? uh, Grisa does ship worldwide within europe you pay uh, less than than 10 euro post and package so we're talking below 100 euro it arrives within 24 hours. I definitely recommend this knife. If you are looking for a nice all-round camp knife, food prep, uh, small whittling tasks, of course it doesn't have the length to be a chopper or a, a big baton knife, but you can baton. Feather sticking, I feel it's very comfortable in the hand also. So I definitely recommend this knife and I'll probably end up having a Kydex made for it because I like it a lot okay the conclusion I recommend this knife Dutch Bushcraft out